Hey, Cody Raw with Tech for Psych. I'm in vacation in Alaska, but there was a press release last week that I felt like I needed to talk about during my off time, uh, just because it's so exciting. The Human Connectome Project, which was started in 2010 to map the connections of the entire human brain, uh, again, had a, co a press conference talking about what they've found in the last five years, and it's just mind-blowing the stuff that they're doing, so I wanted to talk about that here on Tech for Psych. So as I mentioned, the Human Connectome Project had a press release uh, last week talking about things that they've developed, things that they've found in mapping the human brain. Um, basically what happened is back in 2009, researchers realized that we were getting to the ability of mapping all the connections in the human brain, at least the major ones. And uh, the initiative was started by the National Institute of Health, funded uh, several universities, including uh, uh, University of Washington in St. Louis and University of Minnesota, uh, among others, to develop technology to map the connections of the human brain and see what they could discover about the human brain in doing that. So to understand what they did, you have to go back to the basic human physiology of the brain. Um, you know, we have neurons, you've heard of neurons, they're the main cells in your brain that send electrical impulses down what you call an axon. And when you learn new things, the neurons make connections. They come together and they send electrical signals to each other. And it's theorized that our cognition, our thoughts, our behavior, our emotions come from a very, very complex synchrony of electrical uh, waves, oscillations, and um, different uh, firing mechanisms between all the different neurons in the brain. When two neurons come together in the connection, one thing that the brain does is use other cells to bring what's called myelin to that connection. It's a fatty tissue that goes around the dendrites that allows for a better signal to go through the axons. And one thing about myelin, it's a very fatty substance and it shows up very nicely on an MRI, on a specialized MRI called the fusion weighted MRI. Now, try to stick with me here. I won't go in too much detail, but the gist of it is when you have a connection and you have that myelin sheath, the water molecules can only go in one direction. So when you have an MRI machine that's setting up a magnetic field and you send a radio pulse through that, they're going to react in a certain way and the computer can reassimilate that information and they create this beautiful image called a connectome which shows all the different connections with the human brain and they usually make them different colors to show reds going this direction, greens going that direction, blues going the other direction. So what they did was get a database. They scanned 1,200 people. A lot of them were twins to show, uh, sort of like build a database of these connectomes. And the amazing thing is they can use that as a fingerprint. What was basically found out of this project is that each person has a very unique connectome. That if you were to show a computer a person's connectome and basically had that data, the computer can identify who that connectome came from as long as they were in the database with 99% accuracy. The other thing that they found is that certain connections predicted how well a person would do on certain tasks like memory and other learning. Uh, if you think about the implications of that, it is what, you know, one guy on the press release said that this is kind of spooky because we're starting to be able to see individual differences between people and predict how well they're going to do on certain cognitive tasks. To do this, they developed a specific special machine that has increased the resolution by over 10 times and sped up the image acquisition by at least eight times. So if you think about this, this machine is like 100 more times powerful than anything that we had five years ago. And together with biofeedback technology, we can start seeing individuals learning different skills, predicting how they're going to do on different skills and helping them along in their development. Probably a few years down the line, but I think this is where this is going. The resolution of the individualized brain scans is going to make us be able to do this. Now this, is, now this goes back to what I've been talking about for a couple of years now. You know, it's theorized that we would be able to use individualized brain scans uh, at a certain point, but really now it seems to be manifesting because these researchers are really saying we now have the resolution to see individual differences. Before we had to average out, we had to get at least, you know, 10, 12 subjects and average out the differences because they were considered noise. Basically, when you get one of these brain scan images, you get random variations in the signal and creates uh, different little nuances that we thought were just random variations and not having to do with the individual human subject. But now we know that those are specific individual differences. 
Even between the twins within the studies, you could see differences. As I said, it's like a fingerprint. And the more that we learn, the more that we can see how those individual differences reflect different abilities, different behavior, different abilities to do things in a person's professional life. And I think it's really going to get down to helping us learn better, helping us to have better emotional stability, helping us meditate, helping us augment our reality in nature. All these different things are coming from this technology. And I think the Human Connectome Project is a perfect example of both exponential technology and how our computing power is increasing, and also how that can be used to see how individuals are different and help them improve their skills. And this technology, this biofeedback technology is being used already. You know, Christopher DeCharms is doing this for chronic pain in the States. Uh, Rainer Goebel is doing this for depression in Europe. And as this technology develops, I think that we'll see more and more people getting their brain scanned, uh, predicting what ta tasks they're best at, and then using different cognitive strategies to improve their skills and tracking their progress with brain scans. They're also going to be used to diagnose different mental illnesses. People are already doing this with ADHD and autism, and it's just going to grow from there. And uh, a selfless plug here, this is why I want to put on something called the Brain Games. We get people from around the country to come together, compete in different cognitive domains, including memory, decision-making skills, meditation, and other, other things, problem-solving skills, and take a look at their individualized brain scans and see, is there anything that we can pull out of that data? Is there anything that you can pull out of that individualized brain scan that helps educate us on why that person is good at that task? Have them describe their cognitive strategies, share that with the population, work with neurotechnology companies to develop new products, and also come out with some great science from it. So if you're interested in the brain games, if you're interested in what I'm talking about here, subscribe to the channel, comment below, and check out www.techforpsych.com and subscribe to the email list. Again, the more people that we have on board, the better that we're able to have these competitions, uh, convincing academic institutions, financial institutions to pitch in and make the brain games a reality. Uh, I think it would be a great thing to further science and really further neurotechnology in the direction that it's going. Thanks so much for the listen. Cody Roll, Tech for Psych. Talk to you again soon. Bye.